the FBI in Louisville, Kentucky has opened up an investigation to uh, the Breonna Taylor shooting. Um, if you don't know who Breonna Taylor is, if you haven't followed uh, followed along on that story, uh, Breonna Taylor was an EMT and she was shot eight times uh, after the Louisville police uh, used a no-knock warrant to wrongfully enter her home and then blindly fire their weapons uh, into a civilian's home. And uh, the reason why they did this, uh, the, the article I read uh, basically pointed out the reason why they why they did this is because her ex, Breonna Taylor's ex, sent a package to her address and the cops suspected that um, it might be drugs and they were trying to get him on a, on a drug charge, on a drug trafficking uh, charge. And, you know, they decided that they're going to go and do this no-knock warrant and, 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 and fucking bust this guy's ass. We're going to fucking get her, man. Maybe maybe call ahead. Do you think that could do it? Like maybe if you think that it's an ex boyfriend sending a package to an EMT's home that you could have called ahead and been like, Hey, are you aware that you're receiving packages from your ex and those might be drugs and we might need to come search it. Just a heads up, you're gonna get this search warrant. We'll try to come in you know, at a time that is convenient for you as a member of the working class, as a member of uh, uh, of the front line, as an EMT, you're telling me that the Louisville cops couldn't figure out that this lady was a fucking EMT? What at that point it's just like, why do they have such? A, why do cops have such an extraordinarily huge budget if they can't figure out basic shit like this? Her current boyfriend called 911 and he fired one shot because he thought it was a break-in because they were breaking in in the middle of the fucking night with a no-knock warrant. If somebody busts through your house, what the fuck are you going to do? You're, you're going to be in fight-or-flight mode. He was a legal gun owner, by the way. The, the gun that he used was his gun. He had every right to have it. And he was a legal gun owner. Um, and my question is, where are the Second Amendment people on this? Where, where, are those, where are those big 2A people? Where are the people that, you know, went down to, to the Michigan courthouse with their fucking rifles and, and submachine guns and, you know, rocket launchers and shit strapped to them? Where are those people at? That a legal gun owner was shot in his own home by the police. He shot a warning shot. I would I would assume it was a warning shot because he thought somebody was breaking into his girlfriend's apartment which they technically were where's the NRA they always stay silent in these cases they, there's 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 never there's never anything that they say they're always quiet in these cases. NRA doesn't come out to make a statement about how this gun owner was shot in his own home by the police. He was a legal gun owner. And this, this weapon is supposed to be used to keep him safe. The, the law enforcement is supposed to be here to keep us safe and protect and serve us. And here they are. Where are the NRA on that? They're very quiet because it's a black man. They're very quiet about it. Just like they were with Philando Castile. Just like the Republicans in the 60s wanted to take gun rights away from people because black people started exercising their right to bear arms. The Black Panthers did that. They did a demonstration. And the Republicans freaked out. Round ring and freaked out. And they wanted to revoke the gun rights. I did a video about this not that long ago. The history of that is right there. You know, Republicans against guns. It's a real thing that happened in this in, in the uh, mid to late 60s. Can't remember the exact year. I think 66, 67, something like that. 
Yeah, it's a it's a it's a crazy story. But Bobby Seale took a, a bunch of Panthers down, you know, armed uh, to push back against this um, uh, open carry legislation that was basically only put into effect because they didn't want black people to have guns. They didn't want black people to to be able to have guns out. Where's the NRA backing this dude up? Where's the NRA coming out and making this? Where are the 2A people coming out and saying this guy was, you know, th these no-knock warrants aren't safe. This guy thought his house was being broken into. This is castle law. Where, where are these fucking people? They all stay silent. Because the color of this man's skin does not match. The description that they have of somebody breaking in is, is, is the man that was shot. So these cops that murdered Breonna Taylor were given administrative leave or desk duty. Why are they not fired? Why are they not fired? They should be, they should be fired immediately. They should be nowhere near law enforcement. I don't even want to see these people fucking work in security at, at some fucking lush apartment in the highlands i don't want to see them there either i don't want to see them with anything that involves wearing a a badge go find a different fucking line of work because this one ain't working out this is why the defund the police movement exists because these cops get desk duty they're still making a cushy living this lady was an EMT. Like, where? Like, there's no spin on this story. George Floyd, the oh man, they tried to spin that shit so hard, right? And it's, and again, because fear is a part of the American culture, because fear is rooted in fucking everything America likes to do. They looked at someone like George Floyd, who is this tall, you know, buff kind of black dude, works security. You know, had a couple of minor incidences with the law in the past, but everybody says he was a nice guy. Even the clerk said he was a nice guy. Everybody that knew him said he was a nice guy. And they were like, oh, but he had some minor criminal records. He deserved to die. He was a big black guy. Of course the cops must be scared. You know, the cops are armed to the teeth. This guy's an un unarmed black man. But they don't have that narrative with Breonna Taylor. This was in the middle of the night. This was a no-knock warrant. She was an EMT. She was a frontline worker. And you thought she was part of a fucking drug ring? The police chief retired. Good. Good. You should, again, not be anywhere near law enforcement. You obviously can't figure out how to enforce the law or investigate something. <laughs> like, how hard would it have been just to make a phone call? How hard? Sorry if that was a little loud. I had to adjust the mic and it got goofed up a little bit. But how, how hard would it have been just to make a phone call? And let her know that this is happening. And be like, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to have to get a warrant because of this situation. It sucks, but we're trying to be careful. And you show up during the day. Quite frankly, um, the FBI has made a statement. Uh, and the statement says, FBI Louisville has opened an investigation into the shooting of Breonna Taylor. The FBI will collect all available facts and evidence and will ensure the investigation is conducted in a fair, thorough, and impartial manner. As this is an ongoing investigation, we are not able to comment further at this time. So that's Special Agent Robert Brown, who's in charge of this investigation. Um, I... Uh, I'm not sure that I have faith that the FBI will get justice for a black person. To 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 put it to put it bluntly, uh, that's that's how I feel. I really don't have a lot of faith that they will. 
um, I'm sure there's some of you that are kind of going to get upset at my cynicism, but they, the FBI particularly has a pretty torrid history uh, with the civil rights movement, with anything revolving around civil rights, and especially anything revolving around civil rights for black people. Um, I mean, you don't have to go that far into American history to see that. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. was targeted by the FBI as part of COINTELPRO, and they were threatening his life, they were threatening his marriage, they were, um, and then they did take his life. Uh, so, to, to me, I look at this and I'm like, that's nice that they're doing this, but again, I don't know really what's going to come of this. The, the COINTELPRO was also used against the Black Panthers. When was it used against the Black Panthers? When they started their community efforts, when they started their survival programs, and that survival program started doing well. And in the midst of them fucking with the Black Panthers, their survival program still thrived because it was a community-based effort and everybody wanted that shit to work and they weren't going to let some bullshit, racist, paranoid, old white man get in the fucking way. I think what we really need here is um, some kind of citizen oversight. We need civilian oversight over uh, police departments like this. At the end of the day, the FBI are, are, are just, to, to me, the way I look at it is, is the FBI are just like federal cops. And... They're they're going to look at it and say, well, no knock warrants. You know, I feel like they did what they needed to. Oh, this guy had a gun. You know, why did he have this gun out? They're not going to look at it, you know, through the lens of you could have done some you, you procedurally you could have done something different. They're not going to look at it in the lens of that. This was the, uh, uh, you know, uh, middle of the night. Thought somebody they thought somebody was breaking into their apartment you're not going to look at it in that context you're not going to look at it in the context of the fact that policing itself is birthed out of racism out of slave patrols you know that were run by uh, but rich people trying to get their property back because that's what slaves were looked at. They weren't looked at as people. They were looked at as property. So all of this is like the police have come out of basically protecting rich people's stuff. They're not going to look at it in the context of any of this stuff. They're, they're, my guess is they will run this quote-unquote impartial uh, investigation and come out and say, well, you know, it's a tragedy that she died. It's a tragedy that this happened. Uh, but the cops needed to do what they needed to do to catch this drug dealer um, to, to, to stop ruining the community. And, you know, she's kind of an unfortunate fatality in this situation and then call it a day. This is why we need civilian oversight. We need a committee that will look at things like this look at the evidence and say, what can you guys do differently? And the people that were involved are no longer going to be involved in law enforcement. And now the police department has to take funds out of its budget to take care of this loss. Because funerals aren't fucking cheap. Because this is America and everything's a commodity and everything's a product and everybody needs to make money even off of death. I don't know if I have faith that the FBI will be as fair and impartial as they claim to be. Regardless, the fact that, you know, this this stuff is, this is in the zeitgeist now. Like, we are talking about it. This, the FBI has to do something, even if it's a, a theatrical show of faith of some kind. They can't get away with just turning a blind eye, especially to the fact that there are, you know, the, a lot of these cops are just racist straight up. So, 
it's an incremental baby step, but it's super not enough. This would have been fine in 1973. In 1973, if, if the FBI was like, okay, this is cool, but they didn't. And now they're doing it, what, 50, 40, 50 years later. You got. I think we got. We got to catch up with the times. Defund the police. Defund these guys. Put put money into more community based efforts. Watch what happens when, instead of running a country on fear and paranoia and having people give up their rights under the guise of safety, you uphold people's rights. You you take care of their basic needs. And you ensure that you have a criminal justice system that if people get in trouble, they are given the legitimate opportunities to be reformed. Legitimate opportunities to give back to the community that they have wronged and know that their life isn't over because they made one mistake. See what happens in a community like that. See what happens when you implement a system like that. I bet you we won't need facial recognition technology that we're teaching to be racist anyway. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share it around with a friend or an enemy or whoever you think would enjoy uh, a video like this. Just uh, share it out. Uh, YouTube and Facebook usually suppress content like this. They don't usually show content like this to, to a lot of people. So I very much depend on you guys, the viewers and the fans of the show, to get the word out. Uh, and make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to make sure you're getting notifications about this video. Uh, I have a bunch of different ways that you can financially support this show. One is by just making a one-time donation. You can just make a one-time donation. Say, hey, that was a fucking great video, and I want to support it financially. Here's X amount of whatevers. Uh, another way is by becoming a sustaining member. Sustaining membership gets you free tickets to shows, uh, unreleased stand-up comedy content and storytelling content, and early access to a full uh, holistic episodes of Fork Full of Noodles uh, that you get weeks in advance. Weeks in advance, you guys. Uh, and another way to help is by coming to a live show. I've got a bunch of live stand-up comedy performances coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Fringe Festival in Providence, Rhode Island, the, Pro uh, the Fringe PVD. All of these are virtual festivals, by the way, uh, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. If you want to be part of the virtual live audience, let me know. Send me a message. Leave a comment. Uh, email me, uh, and I'll send you the donation link, and I'll make sure that you're on the list to be a part of the live virtual audience. It's July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m., and then we're on to doing more of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Each week, brand new content, brand new material, and a brand new subject matter. And I donate half the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. Uh, the next one is August 7th, and then on August 14th and August 28th. And then we'll be moving right into the fall, so keep up with these dates. You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for uh, continuing to come back to support this channel. Until the next one, we'll see you on the road.